Now we're at the closing 12 inch lathe and we're going to uh, check the tailstock offset by another method shown to me by, by my brother Jan. This isn't one that you read about in a book but it's really a good method. I'm hoping it shows up. Uh, I do have a mirror mounted behind there so you can see the indicator and I've got two wrenches in the tailstock same as what you saw at the bench because if you use two wrenches you can work one against the other and it, uh, it makes for a quick alignment. Now there are many different ways that you can hold an indicator uh, for this and uh, I'm using a little steric back plunger type that works real good. There are other indicators that you can use as well and you might have a much better way of holding this but I've, uh, this is something that I did in uh, about two or three minutes. It's just a piece of two by four, three inches in diameter with uh, holes drilled in it and they're quarter inch holes and the indicator uh, fits in there nicely by friction fit and I can throw that away when I'm done. It didn't cost a dime. Now there are two different ways, uh, two different thoughts on uh, uh, what to do here. Now what we're going to do is indicate, we're going to run the indicator around the tailstock quill and see if the reading is the same on the front as it is on the back. Now that is a good method if the uh, hole in the quill, the tapered hole, number three Morse taper, is truly concentric with the outside. Now if it's not concentric, of course you're going to get a false reading. So I'm going to do it both ways. Uh, the other way is to use a very nice accurate center and make sure you're quill hole is clean when you install that and we're going to indicate around the center and I think that's the preferred method. Now should you run the indicator around the quill here, remember there's a keyway in the bottom so you don't want the key, the plunger to, to go into that and break off. So you really are only interested in 180 degrees of rotation from the front to the back. Also when you do uh, these make sure that your tailstock is locked to the bed with this and that you uh, lock the quill because uh, surprisingly enough as you tighten and loosen these sometimes you will see a little bit of movement in your indicator needle so all those things taken into consideration just about ready to do the actual job. Okay we got the setup made here and this indicator is in contact with the outside of the quill and I set this to zero like wow and I'm going to revolve the uh, <coughs> spindle 180 degrees and we'll see what the reading is on the back side. Uh, and I'm going to look in the mirror. I don't know if that's going to show or not. Never turn the switch on now. So we're going to rotate this around. So it's exactly on the other side and we are getting in the mirror there uh, five thousandths off. So using the two key method here, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> work one against the other and move move it two and a half thousandths, which isn't much. Okay, now I'm going to bring it back and put that on zero. I don't expect it to be perfect yet. Ro rotate the spindle and we are one thousandth off and I'm going to take half of that and ta-da it's right on. Now I would then tighten these <coughs> real tight one against the other and take another reading to make sure that it has not moved. Now I'm going to show the other method here you, uh, revolving around the center here presently. Okay we're going to do this now the other way revolving around a nice high speed center that's in real good condition. Now I moved the indicator in my expensive holder here from the inch and a half or inch and a quarter hole to a, one, a hole that's one inch from the center. Now I, I brought that up into about the horizontal position I have locked my tailstock and I've locked the quill 
and let's revolve this around now and see if it's the same, we're on zero, as it was using the other method. Revolve that around and I want to bring that over to the mirror to show you I'm not lying. And it's right on zero if that shows up. I hope it does. And I'm very satisfied now that those uh, centers are in alignment now. And I think this is a very good method to use. Also this shows that the uh, <coughs> my fears about this hole being uh, not concentric with the outside of the quill were all false. And it truly is concentric and well built. This is a good lathe. So now we know that's on center. It doesn't really do any good to look down here at the witness marks because they're going to show zero. Even if they are as close as you can get with the eyeball, uh, it will be a different reading than what you get with an indicator. This is a very good method. Many different kinds of indicators or holders can be used. Anyways, so you can revolve this or, uh, you, or you can make this. It took two minutes to make that and uh, cost nothing. I hope this helps you now someday when you have to do this on your lathe or you might want to go and do it yet later today just for the pure pleasure of it. This is Tubal Kane signing out saying so long for now.